Good morning, ask good morning. Good afternoon everyone. It is Monday. I am up. I am dressed. I am showered. I am fed. Yes, I am fed. I just had my coffee. I am slowly finishing up drinking my coffee. I am going to get myself sorted for the week. So, um yeah, I figured I would I'm sorry. It's a tag. I figured I would get myself sorted for the week. So this is the remnants of my Amazon unboxing video. This is what's left behind. I did not get a chance to put away any of my items. So I figured I would do that today quickly on camera with you guys and just get this apartment sorted out because it is looking like a pigsty and I'm sick of looking like this. I'm sick of living like this and yeah, so I'm going to get this video started. I hope you guys are having a lovely start to the week and um, I need to put something on my lips. Oh God. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm a little bit all over the place this morning. Yeah, so my Amazon unboxing video should be up by now. It has been a few days now since I uploaded my Amazon unboxing video but I think I have one more video that is going up right after my Amazon unboxing video so yeah it's a little bit of the behind the scenes of what it is like trying to start my YouTube channel or trying to be a professional content creator I'm I haven't really came up with the title yet I'm just finishing up the last bits of that video right now. So probably by tomorrow or the day after, like Wednesday-ish, it should be completely finished. I am finished with the actual timeline, but now I need to add in my links. I need to create a thumbnail, add my music, and anything of that nature. But the actual timeline, the edit, is completely finished. So. I am going to finish off on that in a few days. Excuse the lighting. Oh, it's probably the lighting. That's what it is. Okay, let me face you this way for now. I'm sorry about that. Um, the light from the window is probably bouncing off and causing a glare. So I'm not sure if I was looking a bit washed out just now. But um, yeah, so... I am finishing up that. I am finishing up that video and that should be up sometime this week, the ending of this week, probably Thursday. As soon as I finished filming that video, my Amazon unboxing video, I literally like immediately started editing that video. So I put my chores to the side so that I could hurry up and edit that video and upload it onto YouTube so I haven't had the chance to really unwind so I want to do that now really quickly today is Monday it is my full day off I don't have any real work obligations so I want to take time for myself for today and just do some of the things that I want to do and not focus on any content creation or any thing that requires me to be at the computer. I promise today, I'm not too sure, but I really want to organize my closet a little bit and I also want to clean up the apartment. I want to really sweep, mop, dust and put everything away and pack down these boxes and take them outside because I'm sick of looking at them. So this is going to be a daily vlog and also some hair care. I am going to get into a little bit of hair care. Up until now, I have not been diagnosed with any physical illness. I have purchased a few things off of Amazon that I feel would help combat whatever is going on physically with my scalp. So I definitely want to get into that. I'm going to put you guys on a time lapse for now and quickly go through these boxes and put away everything that I purchased from my last video. I am going to quickly put you guys on a time lapse and I will check in with you guys when I am somewhat done with my organization.
I can't believe I'm finally clearing out this space. I just took down those boxes, but it just opened up my space tremendously. And I'm so happy about that. I'm finally cleaning this apartment properly. I'm going to do a little bit of organiz organization. organization. I have two very large closets that I will show you once I am ready to put away all of my products. I have a closet that I want to dedicate all of my clothes. And then I have a separate closet that I do not mind storing miscellaneous things. I have shelves. I have a shelving unit in both closets, but I'm not sure what exactly I want to place on all of the shelves. However, I have one closet that I do not want to store any random items in that closet. I'm going to specifically use those shelves for bags, shoes, perfume, things of that nature. And then I have a separate closet that I don't mind putting quilts, sheets, blankets, towels, miscellaneous things. So I'm going to start off by putting my hair care products and body care products in these containers and then I'm going to properly store them onto my shelves. I was thinking about purchasing plain sleek acrylic containers but those things tend to break they do have acrylic containers or storage bins that are high density high quality containers but i just did not have the time to research and run around and look for that so i saw these in target and they're not gonna crack these are not gonna crack and chip and break not that I can tell, not that I believe, but the purple is kind of throwing me off. So I don't know. Anyway, you can't win for losing, but I'm going to store as many things as possible in these containers and then tuck them away. I could place my hair care products directly onto my shelves, but then that would mean every time I need to move something aside or grab something i risk dropping something or messing up my shelves and to prevent that i thought that i would just store as many things as possible in these acrylic containers and then i can pull them out and quickly grab what i need to grab and then put them back in without having to mess up my organization so that is what i'm gonna do i am going to plop everything in these containers really quickly and then I'm going to show you exactly what I am planning for my closet. It's not going to be pretty, it's not going to be exactly how I want it, but I definitely want to organize and come up with a system that works for me and for my closet space. I would have loved to place all of these items in my bathroom underneath the sink and the drawers but there isn't enough space and I've already put the things that I really need in my bathroom away and then any of the extra miscellaneous things that is not necessarily important I'm going to just put this in my closet it's not that big of a deal for example I have so much hairspray and hair products that could go in my bathroom but they don't fit so I'm going to put them in my closet So this is my first closet off of my kitchen, literally directly off of my kitchen. And this is the closet that I don't mind, that I don't mind utilizing for different things other than wardrobe, other than clothes and shoes. But I definitely want to have it 
organized and in place, especially when I open and close my closet. I don't want it to be just a mess. These shelves are removable and adjustable, so I'm going to take out, for now, I'm going to take out everything that is in this section or this area right here. I'm going to find it a home later on, and then I'm going to pack my storage containers with my hair care and personal care products and place them here on this drawer and utilize my shelves a lot better because right now I just have random items scattered all over the place and I don't want that so I want to organize my closets a little bit better for the most part they are definitely organized but I want to organize them even further so that is what I'm going to do today This is what I came up with for now. I don't necessarily love, 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 love it, but it'll do for the time being. Yeah, this is what I came up with for now. It will do for now. I don't know. I'm not going to think too hard and too long on it. That's enough. I'm just going to leave this right here. That's it. Like, I'm done. I had done a little bit of research on some elements that can help combat or I don't know resolve some of the issues that I have been having lately and one of the products that I heard that is a good natural resource to combat some of the symptoms that I have been experiencing is kimchi kimchi is I believe originally Korean but it's some sort of Asian ingredient I'm not sure if it's a herb or a spice I should have done more research so I can better explain what it is that I'm talking about but I have been researching some of the holistic things that I can do at home to better my treatment plan I don't necessarily want to take any medications right now if I have to I will but for now I also want to incorporate some natural remedies in my hair care basically I'm doing all of this to help with my hair care situation I'm gonna talk about it later on but I believe I have a fungal infection going on I'm self-diagnosing myself I have not been officially diagnosed by a clinician I am basing it off of some information that I have gathered offline. So again, I don't want anyone to follow in my, again, I don't want anyone following me getting your information and your illnesses and diagnosing yourself based off of videos that I've watched on YouTube. I don't want anybody doing that. I definitely want to encourage you to go see a doctor and have a clinician 
diagnose you properly, but for now I am assuming that the problem that I am having with my scalp is a fungal infection or a yeast situation going on. I will talk about that later on, why I've come to the conclusion and why I chose to believe that in the first place. One of the ingredients correcting a fungal infection or yeast infection is taking probiotics. I've researched a good natural source of probiotic is sauerkraut and kimchi. I was told that, I was told, excuse me, I read online that kimchi is high in probiotics. This is sauerkraut and it has kimchi inside of it. It is a flavoring. I'm assuming it's a flavoring or a herb or a spice. I am not exactly sure, but I believe it is a herb or a spice and it is mixed in with sauerkraut, AKA cabbage. That's all it is, just raw vegetables. Coming up when I would eat sauerkraut, we would apply this. We would put this on Frank's. That's all we would put it on. I don't know any other way to eat this. I am going to eat this on my Franks and tuna fish. That is the best way I decided to incorporate this into my food without having to eat this raw. I have some Franks boiling on the stove. I'm going to warm this up on a frying pan for literally one minute. Just get it nice and warm. Throw this on top of my franks. I have some frank rolls that I'm going to eat as well. That is how I have been eating this. This is going to be my third time eating this and I've also had this with tuna fish on the side. My diet definitely has to change according to some professionals online. I need to get a serving of probiotics in my system every single day. So that is what I'm doing. Not the best way, but a good way of getting some natural probiotics is eating sauerkraut and kimchi. I'm not sure if it's kimchi or if it's sauerkraut, but another vegetable that he was strongly, another good vegetable that he has been suggesting that is healthy for you or beneficial for my situation is sauerkraut. So I am definitely trying to eat lots of sauerkraut for the next month or so until I see some positive effects on my scalp. That is what I have been doing offline. I just recently started within the last few days. You can pick up kimchi or sauerkraut at your local supermarket. Oh my God, I am so sorry, you guys. Earlier I was, earlier in my last clip, I was a bit delirious, but I'm feeling a lot better. I was hungry. I don't know what it was, but I was really hungry as I started to talk to you guys in that last clip. I don't know what came over me, but I was actually hungry. And then I felt like a headache trying to creep up on me, but I just kind of relaxed for the last two hours and just sat down and just let my body do its thing. I was trying my hardest not to take a, sorry. I was trying my hardest not to take a Excedrin because I felt like a headache was coming on, but I really am trying not to take anything right now because I'm taking vitamins and I'm taking probiotics and I really want to try a holistic approach right now. So I'm not trying to mix and match a whole bunch of things, but if I have to, I have to. My headache started to calm down, but my energy levels right now are kind of... I'm going to finish up the last little bits that I have to get done, and then I'm going to call it a night. It is 8 o'clock, so the last time I spoke to you was about two hours ago. I literally just relaxed and just calmed down because I started to get a little bit overwhelmed. I don't know what that was about, but I'm so over this stove, it's not even funny. By the way... I am trying to cut back on sugar. Now that I'm talking about this, I am trying to cut back on sugar. So I went out and I bought a box of Splendor because I have to have 
sugar in my coffee. I cannot drink black coffee. I'm sorry. It's no shade to anyone that does, but I have to have my coffee somewhat sweetened. I do not like bitter coffee. I just don't. So I went out and purchased a box of Splenda, a zero calorie sweetener. I tried it yesterday for the first time and it had this awful medicated taste to it. So yesterday I had about four packets and I promised myself I was going to cut down even more. But I cannot drink black coffee. I do not like better coffee. I just cannot. So today I had two packets. It was a lot better. As far as the medication, taste that aftertaste, it wasn't as strong as it was yesterday. It wasn't as potent. It wasn't pulling through like how it was pulling through yesterday. So I think the less packets, the better. That is just my opinion. If you wanna try Splendor or any kind of zero calorie sweetener, then I suggest you don't put as many packets or scoops of sugar if you don't wanna taste that horrible aftertaste. Today, my coffee wasn't as bad as far as the taste, but yeah, I'm gonna try and brave it out. It says tastes like sugar. It does not taste like sugar. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. It does not taste like sugar. I am so happy to be making this conversion and crossing over to the zero calorie sweetener. I don't know the real benefits of Splendor. I'm assuming that it is a lot healthier than regular granulated sugar. I'm assuming. I'm not saying that for sure. I have not done any real research besides the fact that these alternative sugars tend to have less or fewer calories than regular sweeteners, regular sugar. I'm going to try and thug it out and continue on with the Splenda. However, I look forward to having my cup of coffee per day and the reason why I like coffee, not only for the taste, the reason why I go to coffee in the mornings is to help me get up and to give me that boost of energy. I get it from coffee. I'm not saying that everyone has to get their energy from coffee, but it does help me get through my day. And my day starts with a good cup of coffee. And even though I am trying to cut back on sugar and I am trying to watch my weight i don't know i don't know what is going to happen with this i'm being honest with you it's really not that it's it's not that big of a deal have the goddamn coffee and relax on the sugar and the milk just have the coffee i swear to you i know people who live to triple digits okay i know people who drink coffee and their age is in the triple digits. So getting rid of coffee right now is not something that I'm trying to do. And it is not something that I want to promote either. Like it's not that big of a deal. I'm never going to be that person. However, I do want to cut back on sugar. In my last clip, I told you that there was a doctor who I am currently following on YouTube. His name is Dr. Eric Berg. I will leave his handle in a description box down below, but I've never heard of him. I've never seen him before up until now, but right now he is, I don't know. It's something about the way that he speaks or the way that he explains things. You got to go see him for yourself. You got to watch him and listen to him for yourself. His videos and his content has definitely been helping me with my journey. I am currently in the middle of learning about hair care and natural hair treatments that is geared towards natural hair patterns such as mine. I believe I'm a 4C. If I'm not a 4C, I'm like a 4A or something like that. I'm going to unbox some of the things that I had purchased offline. I'm going to show you some of the things that I have been purchasing offline. I'm gonna keep this in a box. No, I'm not. I don't need to keep this in a box. All of these items, ooh, 
I should take one of those things. Up. All of these items that I bought from Amazon are for the purpose of restoring my hair. Nothing else, I don't think at least. This is the latest of my parcels. I believe everything here is for my hair. Let me drop you down some. So these are some of the things that I bought off of Amazon. Some mason jars. They're just plain, simple mason jars. I believe these are 12 ounces. These might be 16 ounces, but they are definitely a decent size for what it is I'm going to be making and storing. I'm only going to use about one. I'm not going to use all four, but just in case I bought a multi-pack, just in case for the sake of buying it. I'm going to store these away properly. I also bought some extra virgin organic coconut oil, so I should be moisturizing my hair with this. And I also am going to moisturize the ends of my hair with olive oil. I was told that, I was told, I don't know why I keep saying I was told, but I was reading that I should, for someone who has hair like mine's or anybody that has hair similar to mine's, I need to keep my hair moisturized and I plan on moisturizing my hair at least two to three times per week. So I really did stock up on some fresh coconut oil, olive oil, avocado oil, and rosemary. The other ingredients that I purchased was organic fenugreek seeds. I also bought black seeds also known as i think it's called cumin i believe the technical term for cumin is called black seeds and then i have some fresh rosemary you can buy rosemary at your local supermarket it's not that big of a deal but i just went ahead and brought some rosemary and I'm going to be making my own rosemary oil, rosemary water. I'm going to do that tonight, hopefully. If I can find the recipe online, the lady that I am following right now, she makes her own hair care products. Right now, my main concern is to get rid of whatever is going on with my scalp. That's my main concern. And then I want to revert my hair back to my original state and then i can worry about everything else but right now i am trying to tackle whatever is going on with my scalp and then i can worry about hair growth and hair health later on organic tea tree oil i can't remember if i'm going to be using this on its own or if i'm going to be mixing it with something i should have wrote some of this stuff down but it's okay. I'm going to be following these ladies online. It's a few women that I saw online who are 100% natural. They use natural ingredients. Their hair is natural. They don't use any harsh chemicals. They only use things that they make at home. So I'm going to be doing the same. Oh, and then these silk caps. These, no, these are not silk. These are satin caps. So I have these satin caps, which I should be using silk pillows because silk pillowcases and silk bed sheets are supposed to be best for your skin and hair, but I cannot justify. Yes, I can, I can justify it, but your girl does not want to spend those kind of coins right now and 100% pure silk sheets cost money right now. And I brought this strainer because I'm not gonna put whole rosemary in my hair. I'm going to 
let the rosemary marinate in some water and I'm going to strain it out in the morning using a strainer. I also managed to find, I forgot I even purchased this. I purchased kimchi, the seasoning. I think this is seasoning. Yes, kimchi seasoning. This says no MSG, probiotic, gluten-free, no GMO, 25 billion probiotic. So this is literally a seasoning. I'm assuming it's like a chili powder and I'm going to pour this on every single thing I can think of. I'm going to use this mostly on my scalp. So I'm going to pour this, I believe, in water. I am going to mix this in with my shampoo, basically. No, scratch that. I am going to mix this in some water after shampooing, basically use it as a hair mask, and then let it sit for like 20, 30 minutes, and then go back in the shower and rinse it off and condition it out my hair. It returns to kimchi filling if you add water. So 240 ml of water per 80 grams of seasoning. Oh God, now I gotta weigh the thing. Okay, I think I have a thing that, I have a, um, a how you call it, store it in a cool place to avoid direct sunlight. Recommend to use as soon as possible after opening it. Oh my God, this is just so much drama. I'm gonna have to read this instructions on how to use this properly and I will get back to you. I'm not gonna do this now. I'm not gonna use this at all. I'm probably gonna start again sometime over the weekend. But right now, I'm just worried about moisturizing my scalp. I'm definitely going to moisturize my hair right now. I already started I already started cutting off my braids because I'm getting ready to take these out. I'm probably going to take them out over the weekend. I'm not going to take them out today or tomorrow because I have other obligations. I'm trying to get my next video up and out and I'm also trying to straighten up my apartment. So yeah, I wanted to start filming so I don't have time for my hair right now but I am definitely going to be moisturizing my hair from here on out and taking much better care of my hair than I did before. Sorry, I am in bed right now. I just got through moisturizing my scalp with that coconut oil and I don't know I'm trying not to think about it I'm trying not to let it overpower me but um, yeah I was just filling on like my hair the beginning and ends of some of my hair because not all of my hair is in braids some of it is completely um, loose like I've taken out a few braids and I'm just filling along my hair like the shafts of my hair or the root of my hair and it just like it's breaking my heart it really is breaking my heart to see my hair like this I'm just I just came back on camera just to tell you that I am logging out for the night and I did not manage my rosemary oil for tonight but as soon as i get home i will start on my rosemary oil and i will finish doing whatever it is i need to be doing i'm gonna soak these nails off soon as i get home and get my nails done over again i'm not filling them i'm not liking my nails right now so i'm gonna do that straight after work and then i'm gonna come home and start my rosemary oil i think the rosemary oil should sit between two to four hours or something like that, two to five hours. So right before I go to bed, I will apply my rosemary oil. So I'm not worried about it. I was hoping to do it tonight, but it's okay. I just use my coconut oil instead. So that is what I did. I will see you guys in the morning. So I'm going to get started on making my rosemary spray and I'm also going to add some black seeds and then I have some organic fenugreek seeds. 
yeah, organic fenugreek seeds. I can't find the exact videos of the young ladies who I follow, but I believe one of the young ladies had crushed up her black seeds and then added it to her mix. I'm not sure if I want to add it to my concoction the way that it is, but either way, I don't think there's a right or wrong way to this. I've seen people use these seeds straight out of the bag without crushing them or transforming them into a powder. But I think I'm going to crush my seeds today and then in a month or so, I'm going to use them in a seed formula instead of crushing them and turning them into a powder. I don't know. I think I'm gonna do a powder form today. So I have a tablespoon that I'm going to use. I'm gonna use about two scoops of each. I'm gonna use two scoops of black seed and two scoops of fenugreek seeds. And then I'm gonna use, say about three scoops of rosemary. These are actual rosemary leaves. They are not on a stem or anything like that. They are completely plucked from the stem. So I'm just going to use about three to four scoops of rosemary seeds. And then it is suggested that you use boiling hot water if you want to keep it as a liquid spray form or if you want to turn it into an oil then you can add whatever oil of your choice such as olive oil, coconut oil, or rosemary oil. The concoction that I'm going to make today is for detangling and healing purposes. I want to basically use it as a leave-in hair mask, basically. I don't really want it to be an oil today. I'm happy with using plain olive oil and plain coconut oil as my oils rather than trying to make a fresh rosemary oil. I will do that eventually, but not now. I mostly want to use it as a detangler spray. I want to spray it on my hair to keep it hydrated and detangle it while I have it in this hairstyle currently. I'm going to take out these box braids over the weekend, but for now, I definitely want to moisturize my hair from now on. Every other day, I plan on moisturizing my hair and oiling my scalp definitely every other day i'm at least twice a week i'm gonna hold myself to at least twice a week but i want it to be every other day i'm definitely going to care for my hair a lot more often than i previously did again if i haven't said it before i'm saying it now do your research find out what exactly you are using in your hair or any of these products you feel like using, do your research beforehand. Don't take hair care advice or hair lessons from me because obviously I'm not doing too well at the moment when it comes to my hair. And consult with a professional, consult with your primary care physician or a dermatologist or someone who specializes in hair and scalp. To get started, I'm going to boil my hot water in the meantime. I'm going to crush the black seeds only, and then I am going to add everything together, close it up tightly in my mason jar and set it on the side and let that sit overnight. And then hopefully by tomorrow or the day after, it is ready to use. But also I wanted to tell you that the other day I did moisturize my hair, my whole entire hair, from my roots all the way down to my ends. I moisturize my hair with the coconut oil and also with the olive oil and I did not rinse it out. Did I rinse out the olive oil? I might have rinsed out the olive oil, but the coconut oil, I left it in and I definitely noticed sometime last night, early this morning, I feel like my hair is completely moisturized. I have not felt like this in a very long time. So I am hoping the steps that I am taking helps me improve my hair pattern. I don't know. I feel like it was a coconut oil and I'm also incorporating a lot more probiotics into my diet because I was on an antibiotic over a year ago, a year and a half to two years ago. And I noticed right after I finished my antibiotics 
my hair started to um, break off and do what it's doing now. I really do believe in my heart that I have a fungal infection on my scalp. So from my understanding, from what I read online, the way you combat fungal infections and yeast infections is to take probiotics. And I'm also applying products that are high in probiotics to my scalp topically other than eating and drinking probiotics so i'm also applying that to my scalp as well i'm gonna i'm gonna just take a hammer and lightly tap on the bag to crush my seeds the young lady in her video had used her bullet or her blender and I don't want to use my bullet or my blender and these seeds are so fine and small to begin with. I really don't want to put this in a blender even though the young lady that I watched had put it in her blender but I really don't feel like doing that. I don't know. I just don't feel like it's going to work for me. So. I'm gonna take two full scoops. And I'm gonna crush it. Using a hammer. And it's so early in the morning. Oh God. Do I have a blender? I have a blender. Okay, honestly, I don't want to disturb my neighbors. That's enough banging. I'm just going to use these black seeds. They're so teen. That's one. That is one seed. It looks like a mouse dropping, even smaller than a mouse dropping. It literally looks like a mouse dropping. I'm not going to crush them anymore. Maybe during the day I might use my blender, but for this mixture it's fine. Wow, that's a strong smell. I'm going to use two scoops of one tablespoon for each. And for my rosemary, I'm going to use three scoops. And now this is the honey Greek. This smells like, ooh, kind of smells like bird seeds too. What cereal is that? Maybe not. It may I, I might be just tripping, but and these are my funny Greek seeds. This is about the size of a mouse dropping, maybe a little bit larger. Can you see that? Oh my God, is it blending into my hand? Yeah. I don't want nothing on my floors. I really don't. Ooh, the smell. Oh boy, it smells like a bird's cage.
and it says to store these products in a cool and dry place no need to refrigerate so I'm just gonna put these in my cabinets and next for my rosemary I'm gonna use two and a half scoops because that is a lot of rosemary. I hope this stuff doesn't give me a headache. Oh God. I knew that was gonna happen. Oh God. Be careful you don't burn yourself. It's piping hot, but I'm gonna stir this just a little bit. I'm not gonna go crazy. I might have over poured the hot water. But I'm just gonna stir this just a little bit. Yeah, I think two, two and a half scoops of rosemary is enough. I'm gonna let this sit. I'm gonna continue reading up on some of this so that I can have a much better understanding. I wanna give you guys a better understanding, but my memory is so short term. Anyway, that is it for now. I will probably check in with you guys once my once I feel like I'm gonna use the water. And that's probably not gonna be until tomorrow. I wanted to get your opinion, especially for those of you who use gel, for those of you who actually physically use gel. I personally rarely ever use gel. I wanna say I haven't used gel on my hands and feet. I haven't used gel in maybe 10, 15, maybe even longer than that years. And when I did use gel, I probably used gel maybe once or twice. But for those of you who use gel, I want your opinion on whether or not gel helps prevent cracks and chipping of nail polish, especially cracking of the nail your actual physical nail and chipping of nail polish. If memory serves me correctly, that was the whole purpose of gel. And I believe it was a thing and I believe it worked back then, but I'm not entirely sure. So that is why I'm leaning on you guys to tell me or give me some sort of advice. Here's the thing, when it comes to my feet, I, um, I like for my toenails to be all one shape and size. By the way, I do not have brittle or thin or weak toenails. But for some reason, I keep banging my feet onto my furniture, anything, and I'm always chipping and snagging my toenails. Summertime is right around the corner. I do like for my toenails to be a certain length. I do like my toenails to be a certain length and width, especially length. And every time I chip my toenails or my nails, I have to cut them down all to one size because I would like for my toenails and my nails to all match up and align with the same shape and size. Even if I don't like that particular shape or size or that length, I can't stand when one nail is a different shape and size to another nail or the nail polish is coming off. I have to take off everything and go as basic and bare as possible because I can't stand it. I really cannot stand to see my toenails, especially my toenails, all different length and sizes. So I keep my toenails very short and I like for the nail to actually sit at the ending of my toes or a little bit longer than my actual physical toe. And what I mean by longer, I don't mean an inch longer than my toe, maybe literally a quarter of an inch or 
less than a quarter of an inch longer than my actual toe so i'm thinking about doing my gel top coats again i don't know i'm not really sure the nail salons do charge extra for that and i did go and purchase my own gel kit off of amazon a while ago i used it maybe once or twice and then that was it and i'm thinking about doing it all over again because i noticed that for some reason lately i cannot keep my toenails in check like i can't i don't know why it just does not i'm surprised that my fingers don't chip and break the way that my toenails chip and break i just painted my toenails a few hours ago they're black they're dry they're done i just had an idea come to me because yeah my feet is always out all summer long all spring long my feet is out and i do like my toes i do like my feet i do like my nails i think i'm going to try and gel my nails myself especially at home i can do that myself at home i don't really necessarily need to go to the salon to get gels put on my nail not that i'm saying that i'm cheap or anything but i don't know i didn't really see the point of it back then and now i'm like i can do this myself at home it's not that big of a deal it's just the polish that i don't mind doing myself but everything else i definitely recommend going to the salon or i would rather have someone else do it so i managed to find my kit excuse the mess i just got through making my own leave-in rosemary spray this is my kit i bought this off of amazon i will try to leave a link down below i don't remember exactly how much this cost me but i found these gel based or gel like polish inside my actual cure i believe this is called a oh my goodness what is this called anyway the top gel that i'm going to be using is from beetles it's called top it off i believe this is a top base hopefully there are directions and instructions for me to read i'm going to read this really quickly and figure out exactly how i do this i've done this once or twice before again it has been such a long time that i have forgot i'm only going to apply this onto my toes because my toes are the issue right now my hands are okay for now i'm not going to put this on my hands but i am definitely going to figure out exactly how to use this thing i'm going to put you guys on a time lapse i had read over the instructions on the bottle and it says to coat the nails with the top coat and then cure it for 90 seconds to 120 so i'm going to coat my nails once cure it and then coat it again and cure it again i'm going to use my uv led lamp that i got off of amazon to cure the gel and hopefully that shouldn't take me too much time So 
so finally the moment that I have been waiting for or we have been waiting for I have my concoction my hairspray is going to consist of rosemary funny Greek and black seed aka cumin common seeds I believe it's called cumin it's also known as cumin seeds. I am going to use my own DIY hairspray that I had made more than 24 hours ago and I believe it is ready. Most people say after five hours, two hours. One lady had posted that she allowed her concoction to sit and marinate for over a week or something like that, but I'm not doing that. I think 24 hours is enough for me. I also allowed all of my ingredients to submerge in filtered water. So I did not use tap water for this concoction. I wanted my hairspray to be as clean and clear as possible. And I know that tap water is not filtered, probably slightly even contaminated. So I went ahead and submerged all three of these ingredients in bottled distilled water. I purchased this water from Target. I believe I purchased this from Target. I either purchased this water from Target or Stop and Shop, but I'm almost 99.9% .9 sure I purchased this from Target. It is by the brand Good and Gather, and also it says on a bottle, processed by advanced filtration and reverse osmosis technology. So I am definitely at ease when I use this water or drink this water. I don't know if I stated that in my last clip when I was making this concoction, but I am using bottled water for this. It has been well over 24 hours since I made my hairspray. Yeah, so I'm going to decant this into a spray bottle. I'm not going to pour this directly on my hair. The spray bottle that I am going to be using is this one. I got this spray bottle in Target. It's from the brand Up and Up. I'm also going to use a funnel so that I get all of the liquid into my spray bottle. I'm going to strain out the liquid using this strainer. Oh look, you see? You see? Oh my god. So next time, don't do what I did. Strain it into a bowl and then pour it into the bottle. Use a funnel, pour it in a bottle. It went in so much easier than before. And you can also use the bowl in case any excess falls out. But now for the fun part, I am going to let this sit in my hair. I'm not gonna rinse this out. This is going to be a spray that I can leave in my hair. Yeah, for the exciting part. I am going to spray my little mixture onto my hair and scalp and let that sit. I am not gonna wash that out. And I am currently in the process of taking out these braids. I did cut them because it is going to be a lot easier than to try to unravel these braids when they are much longer. So I start off by cutting my braids before actually taking my braids out, but I am going to start spraying my hair and and in the meantime, I'm going to tell you some of the benefits of using some of these products. All right, you guys, that is it for this video. I am going to leave this video here. I am truly sorry on how I abruptly ended off this video, but don't worry, I will be back in a few days with a new video. It's pretty much going to be a continuation of this video. This video is over two and a half hours long and I just can't bring myself to upload and post a two hour long video. I figured I would leave this video here and put the rest of the clips in a separate video so if you want to see what decision i ultimately came up with and what i decided to do with the remainder of my hair you're gonna have to tune into next week's video so i am trying to upload this video tomorrow which is monday i will probably upload part two on thursday but if not i will upload it on sunday so just be on the lookout for that video for now i'm gonna leave this video here and just continue on giving you the scoop regarding my hair and video
video too so yeah but um if you appreciated today's video please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below what you think happened to my hair or what you think might have caused my hair to spiral out of control and also if you know any good hair care specialists or doctors who specialize in hair and scalp please leave your suggestions and any tips and tricks that you may have or know personally in the description box down below i am located in brooklyn new york however if an opportunity were to approach and i would have to fly out of state i'm willing to consider that as well but i am located in new york city so yeah but that is it for this video you guys and please do me a favor i would really appreciate it if you were to subscribe to my channel and i would be so happy for you to join the team thank you guys for watching i will see you guys all in my next video bye